practice, practice, practice. I wish I could let you off the hook, but I can't. Practice is a critical thing for a test like the SATs, so we have to do it. Let's try a short passage together now. This is an example of a humanities passage. I'll give you five minutes to work on these, and then we'll go over the answers. Got it? Good luck, guys.
Okay, time is up. If you're not done yet, hit the pause button real fast and rejoin us when you're ready. But for the rest of you, right now we are going to go over the lovely correct answers. Answers 1, C, 2, A, 3, D, and 4, D. I'll give you a minute to grade yourself. Now it's time to talk about short passages. The critical reading section will have eight questions related to short passage. That may not seem like a whole lot, but a short passage points are generally some of the easier points. That means you definitely don't want to skip those or fail to grab these points. I think of the points on the SAT like fruit hanging from a tree. Each piece of fruit is worth the same amount, but some are on way lower branches and much easier to grab. Why not make sure you grab those first? It definitely makes sense to. Question 1 reads, in line 4, ironically, refers to the fact of what? Let's head to line 4, which reads, Yet ironically, the most important poems of her maturity were political and feminist. She was preoccupied with the liberation of Italy, anti-slavery, and the role of women. Did you get that? The author is saying, dang, even though the most important poems were the political ones, she wasn't even well known for those. Therefore, answer C is correct. The most important work of a great poet are not the most popular. Make sense? Now let's move on to question two. It reads, which statement about the poem Aurora Lee can be inferred from the passage? Here we have a set of three statements and it's our job to see which ones are implied from the passage. These questions that have sets are time consuming because they are really more like three in one questions. But don't worry, they are also the most straightforward since they are usually asking about straightforward facts. Let's take a look at each statement at a time. One, it is as romantically compelling as the work of Charlotte Bronte. Before we can answer this, let's go back to the passage and read up on the poem Aurora Lee. The passage says in lines six through 10, it is in the context of those concerns as reflected in Casa Fuidi windows, Aurora Lee, poems before Congress, and last poems that her justly famous love poems to Robert Browning ought to be read. Unfortunately, those poems relating her ideology are rarely read today. We can see that Aurora Lee must be a political poem that is not well read. Let's go back to the question. Statement 1 is not correct. Aurora Lee is a political poem. It is not one of Browning's romantically compelling poems. Let's cross that one off. Statement two, it contains socio-political themes. Let's head back to the passage. The passage says in lines four through nine, yet ironically, the most important poems of her maturity were political and feminist. She was preoccupied with the liberation of Italy, anti-slavery, and the role of women. It is in the context of these concerns, as reflected in Casa Fuidi Windows, Aurora Lee, poems before Congress, and last poems that her justly famous love poems to Robert Browning ought to be read. Okay, so Aurora Lee contained political and feminist themes. Then yes, those are socio-political themes. Socio-political is just a fancy way of saying relating to both social and political concerns. Going back to statement two, 
Let's circle that because that is correct. Let's take a look at statement three. It is one of the most popular of Browning's poems. Ah, but we already know from what we just read that Aurora Lee was not well read. Therefore, let's cross off three. Only statement two is correct. Therefore, the correct answer choice is A. Moving on, let's go over question three. The author most likely would encourage the reader of Browning's love poems to do what? Well, we know that the author believes that Browning's most important poems are her political ones. Therefore, D is the correct answer. The author would ask readers to also appreciate the importance of the poet's other works. Question 4 reads, which statement best summarized the contents of the passage? Let's head back to the passage. Lines 9 through 12 read, unfortunately, those poems relating to her ideology are rarely read today. Perhaps this is because Browning's personal history provided the public with a story as compelling as the plot of Charlotte Bronte's novel, Jane Eyre. Wow, so sounds like Browning had a really dramatic personal life that kind of took the spotlight away from her serious work. Sounds a lot like she has something in common with Tiger Woods and President Clinton. The correct answer is D. Stories of Browning's life have overshadowed the other aspects of her work. You might be wondering, well what if the questions are about the little details that I didn't bother to memorize? Are you sure it's okay to overlook those details? The answer is yes, because the SAT is an open book test. So, duh, the answers are right in front of you, basically just staring at you. The real test isn't to memorize the article, it's to understand it. The SAT is never going to test you on facts, and that is what makes the SAT so very different from your normal high school exam.